Hello, everybody. Solomon reigned in Israel after his father David, and he wrote three books that we have in the Bible. The first one that he wrote is actually the third one in our Bible. It's called Song of Solomon. Um, he wrote that when he was quite young and, and very much in love, and we will look at that one next week. The other one is Proverbs, which was written by him during the middle age years. And you can hear that by the way that he writes and the topics that he, he addresses. And that we looked at last week. And this week we're going to look at the other book that he wrote, which he was quite old by the look of things and by the sound of the way that he writes. Um, it's called Ecclesiastes. And there are many themes in this book. There are themes like fatalism, existentialism, chauvinism, hedonism, cynicism, pessimism is the sort of general feeling of the book, which sounds pretty much like 2016. <laughs> Looking back on his life, he is assessing the point. He is assessing what he did with his life and is quite frankly quite disappointed and rather depressed about the whole thing. In the way the book is structured, he is acting as a speaker of the house. So he is presiding over a debate. The debate is in his head, but he has written it down on paper for us, fortunately. And the, the motion for the debate is, life is worth living. And so he gives the negative and the positive side both time to air their views and to express their opinions. So the most important question that he asks is, what is the point of life? And on the negative side, he says again and again that it's all meaningless. It's pointless. It's just a chasing after the wind. Solomon being by far the wealthiest man in the then known world and the wisest man who ever lived had access to anything he wanted. And he says time and time again, I denied myself no pleasure. He tried everything. He tried music. He went into agriculture. He went into um, collecting. He was a collector of artifacts. He tried entertainment. He tried laughter, business, um, pleasure, wine, woman, and song. You know? um, he, he tried philosophy. He collected wisdom books from all over the world. He, and he had the wherewithal to go into everything he did really deeply. But yet he found, towards the end of his life, looking back, that none of it actually accounted for anything. It was all pointless. Nothing satisfied him. And he sounds a lot like us today. So many people live these frenetic lives, chasing after things, trying to find meaning. You know, it's not enough to watch just the one series. We have to have the next series. It's not enough to, to try this coffee. We have to try that coffee because it's better or we play a game, or we have to get to the next level because that level didn't quite satisfy. And we were constantly looking for things to satisfy us. And we, we shift from one thing to the other, even our style, a culture that we get immersed in. We, we're constantly looking for things to satisfy us for some new experience. And some of these things are not bad in their place, but if we're trying to find meaning in them, we're going to be sadly disappointed and disillusioned. We need to find meaning in our lives first and then add these things in their place and then we will be happy. So why did Solomon fail to make sense of life? The problem is he had tunnel vision. He looked at everything under the sun, which is a phrase he repeats often, under the sun, I saw under the sun, and in this life. He observed everything in this life. And you see, that's part of the problem, is when we only look at this life and under the sun on this earth, we're going to get things out of perspective. We need a perspective that looks up beyond the sun. We need a heavenly perspective. And we need a, a, a view that has not only this life, but the life to come in view. And when we have those things, because God has put eternity in our hearts, as Solomon says, when we look at life from heaven's perspective and light of the life to come, everything fits in and makes sense. If we don't, it'll lead to disillusionment, depression, 
frustration and pointlessness. On the positive side, there are two particular chapters that Solomon focuses on God, and that's chapter 3 and the last part of chapter 11 and into chapter 12. And you can go and read those for yourself if you'd like to. In chapter 3, we find a passage that a lot of people know. It says there's a time for everything. There's a time to be born. There's a time to die, a time to grieve, a time to dance. There's times for everything, a time for every season under heaven. But we mustn't stop there. We need to go on and read the rest of the passage, which says that it is God who is in charge of the times in our life. He makes everything beautiful in his time. And he has planned all of our times. He is the one who is sovereign. He is the one who is in control. Our times are in his hands. Nothing happens by chance. It's not fatalism. It's not, oh, what will be, will be. God is in control and he brings us through times and he walks with us through those times, depending on what he is developing and growing in us. And those times are brought to, to develop his character in us for future blessings. Because remember, we have an eternal perspective. So what those times are doing in us through God is, is preparing us for the life to come. We need to have a longer view of happiness because then this world makes a whole lot more sense. Then in chapter 12, which is a long passage, so I'm not going to read it to you now, he says two things. One, remember God. Remember your creator in the days of your youth. And it's almost like he's admitting that he forgot and his life shows that he did. He says, remember God and the instructions he has given you before it's too late, before old age sets in or before your life is snuffed out unexpectedly. Remember your creator now while you're young. And the second thing he says is fear God because the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. He says that in both this book and in Proverbs. Fearing God is just making more of God than anything else in your life. People are afraid of so much. There are so many things in this world to be afraid of. But yet if we have a fear of God, that is a big fear that drives out all other fears. Why should we fear God? Well, because as Solomon says in this chapter, it's to him that we have to give account for what we have done with the life that he has given us. A fear of him saying, you messed up, is a very healthy fear. It's a positive fear, and it drives you to live according to the instructions that he has given us. It drives us to follow and obey his instructions, which he has spelled out for us in the word. So why is this book in the Bible? Well, the one thing, it's going to, it tells you what's going to happen if you mess up. Um, you will miss the point if you don't follow his instructions, if you don't allow him to be the one who caused the shots in your life. And if, if you do things just because this is what you do, you've missed the point. Because nothing that is done for him is ever wasted. The second reason that God put this in the Bible is Solomon looks back and he, looks, he goes back to the purpose for which God called Israel in the first place. To be an example of his blessing to the nations. So that the nations could see God at work in them and praise him and fear him too. And you know, maybe that's for us as well because they had drifted away from it and maybe we've drifted away from that sometimes as well. Maybe we need to get back and when we have the right perspective on our lives and on this world and we understand that our times are in God's hands, we will be willing to go wherever God sends us, do whatever he calls us to do, put our lives on the line if necessary for the sake of eternity that is in the hearts of man already, to bring others to fear him, to bring others to know him. So whether you've never feared God or whether you have walked with God and you've neglected that and allowed the, the world to crowd him out, why not take a moment now to just allow God to move back into the right perspective in your life and see your life through his eyes and allow him to develop his character in you because you are 
aware that you are being developed and grown and formed for the life to come.